over to you, Dr. Nath. At the outset, I'd like to thank AOS for uh, giving me this opportunity to take part in this wonderful webinar. So my talk is going to go back a little and uh, uh, tell the importance of corneal scraping. So why is corneal scraping important? Though we may have a very clear patient history and we can have a clinical characteristics of the ulcer, Making an empirical diagnosis is objective. So we need to have a subjective uh, proof that what type of organism you're dealing with. So the, very important to have the corneal stains and cultures to identify the what type of organism. And the antibiogram also allows us to tailor the treatment based on the sensitivity of the organism. So corneal scraping is the most valuable specimen in case of corneal ulcer and its examination is a mainstay in the diagnosis and subsequent management. So the instruments used for scraping are uh, normally what we use is Kimura spatula, a 26 gauge needle, which has to be handled very carefully. You can use a hypodermic needle, Bart Parker blade, surgical blade number 15 is probably my choice of uh, instrument to, for scraping. A calcium alginate swab, a platinum sp uh, spatula, which has got a rounded flexible tip can also be used. The prerequisites are that the patient has to be seated on a slit lamp. A wire speculum is optional. Propracaine is the common an anesthetic used is because it is uh, the least bacteriostatic and use a 15 number blade and a Bart Parker blade. So three glass slides we need. We need a gram, one for gram stain, one for KOH wet mount. And in, you can have an additional gla uh, glass slide if you're suspecting um, atypical macrobacteria or um, a cacoflor white stain for acanthine baba and so on. So culture plates, which are commonly used are blood agar, chocolate agar, and saburut uh, dextrose agar. And other optional plates uh, may include a non-nutrient agar with the escherichia over overlay, thiamartin medium, and uh, thioglycolate agar if you're suspecting other organisms. So there are some situations where we may be uh, finding it difficult to uh, obtain the samples for corneal scraping. These are very small corneal ulcers, as you can see in the left uh, photograph. They are less than two millimeters, sometimes maybe very difficult to get any uh, specimen. Probably you can uh, just get one and just use it uh, to, for staining, probably doing a gram stain alone, uh, if you're very particular about this, or you can start on an empirical treatment. In patients with non-separative keratitis, that is um, uh, without uh, any sign of infection, uh, 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 scraping is not indicated. If you do scrape, you might uh, find that you don't have any specimen. In advanced keret uh, keratitis with severe keratolysis and desmentoseal, you have to be very careful about scraping. And even if you uh, scrape, you might just get some necrotic tissue and may not get any specimen. And cases with deep stromal keratitis, which no access to, uh, 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 to the instrument, uh, again, getting a, a scraping, any uh, valuable scraping would be very difficult and you need to assort to different methods for collecting the specimen. In patients with intact epithelium, a debridement of epithelium is often required before uh, we collect the specimen. So a uh, role of corneal scraping is very important to first to facilitate the uh, diagnosis. And uh, it's important uh, to uh, scrape the active edge and not the base of the ulcer because most often the base contains only the slough except in certain organisms where underlying the base, you can still have some active organism growing but majority of the active uh, uh, ulceration uh, so that you have to collect it only from the edge of the ulcer. And that will give us the maximum uh, information. So in patients uh, who have very deep seated ulcers, as you can see here, the problem is to access this uh, infiltrate. And what we can do is we can pass a uh, braided suture such as an 80 silk through the uh, infection and uh, the corrugated, uh, uh, the nature of the suture can catch on some of the infiltrates. And this can be cut into small uh, bits and it can be inoculated on uh, different media. So that will give us an idea about um, uh, whether we are going in the right uh, direction. Again, uh, having only an endothelial plaque such as this, you know, when you have a large endothelial plaque and the uh, overlying cornea is, uh, um, is clear, then you can do uh, a paracentesis through, uh, um, through the limbus using a 30 gauge or a 26 gauge needle. Either you can scrape or aspirate the endothelial plaque and which can be inoculated or uh, which can be stained and uh, to uh, come to a, uh, a conclusion about what type of organism you're dealing with. 
The other important thing is doing an incision biopsy, particularly in large ulcers where you're not able to access them because of the overlying epithelium or they're very deep seated. Doing a, a corneal punch using a skin biopsy, uh, trifine sigil, which is about two millimeters. It has to be done at multiple points. And again, at the active, uh, where the peripheral edge of the ulcer, which is actively growing. And it's important to include a portion of the area of the uninvolved cornea as well. Or you can use a 11 number a blade, which is slightly sharper, um, but it has to be done under the microscope, where you can take the patient to, uh, to the operation, micro, uh, operation theater, and you can do a, a deep-seated uh, biopsy uh, carefully uh, without uh, perforation. Uh, the next uh, uh, possibility is having a posterior lamella infiltrate. So you, here, here you can uh, approach the ulcer by doing, uh, doing a lamella flap which can uh, help us to access the infiltrate. And then you can, once you've got uh, uh, the specimen, you can put the flap back and suture it. And uh, the other thing that we can do is very large ulcers such as this, and which has been under treatment for quite a while, which is uh, not responding to tre uh, treatment and is really uh, uh, reclarescent. Then these patients can have an excision biopsy. And this uh, ulcer is quite shallow, so we can just excise the, the top portion of the ulcer and uh, do an excision biopsy of the cornea. The advantage is that so the, there'll be better penetration of the uh, drugs, antibiotics that we are uh, using. And the other thing is that because there's a lot of slough which can block the uh, penetration of the antibiotic by removing it, that also again uh, gives a better uh, chance for uh, the uh, ulcer to heal. And debulking the infection itself, when you remove about 90% of the infection, the, the, uh, the antibiotics will definitely work much better. So doing an excision biopsy in these even shallow and but large ulcers, which are um, uh, probably uh, going towards the uh, limbus, is uh, suggested. In patients with uh, very deep ulcers, which are uh, again um, quite large, you can do a, a DALC, something like a near total DALC, which is a manual DALC. And uh, this can uh, debulk the infection and allow us to uh, treat the patient. And also gives us a better microbiological uh, diagnosis because we can we have more specimen to uh, work with and we can have more stains and um, uh, smears done and cultures done. So we'll, uh, we can deal with this even if there is a recurrence of infection after the manual DALC. And um, so the uh, role of corneal scraping is not only for diagnosis, but also to support medical therapy because it reduces the organism load and the superficial keratectomy and also exposes the organism to the uh, direct uh, antimicrobials that we're using. This is a small video showing um, how the scraping is done. It's always important to, to use the same direction. There's a very small also, you can see that I'm scraping the periphery and use another blade to, you, uh, to take the, uh, uh, the next site for inoculation. So uh, it's important that you don't uh, use the same blade because you will be re-inoculating or you may accidentally inoculate in another area and uh, scrape in the same direction, don't use multiple direction and always the periphery of the ulcer, the active edge of the ulcer should be scraped. So smear preparation can be done uh, uh, once a, a 15 number blade is, uh, uh, the ulcer is scraped, it's transferred to a glass line and the marking is done uh, with a wax pencil to identify the area of the smear. Two slides are normally prepared, one for gram stain and one for K-weight stain. And uh, like I told you before, if you're suspecting something uh, other than a bacteria or a fungus, then you can do additional stains. So this is a uh, one which is showing the fusidium on a lactophenol blue uh, cotton stain. So um, difficulties with gram stain are uh, the number of organisms and it is very low. We may not be able to identify the organism. Gram negative organisms, because they're decolorized, may be very difficult to identify, particularly when you have a very low uh, sample. And uh, improper decolorization deposits in the gram stain or um, precipitates on the, uh, on the gentian violet can also cause some confusion in uh, looking at the gram stain. It's also important to understand that this uh, stain can be contaminated due to repeated usage and fungus can grow. So it's important to uh, take that into consideration as well when you're having a fungal uh, uh, growth seen in a, uh, a patient with the uh, possibility of a bacterial infection. Um, so negative smears are, uh, can, be, uh, uh, can be seen in patients who have already been treated elsewhere or uh, who have already been treated with antimicrobial agents 
or when there is a mechanical damage to the cell wall, when there is an insufficient sample which is acquired, like in very small ulcers, when you may not be able to get, or deep-seated ulcers, when you're not able to get enough sample and you see only epithelial cells. Poor staining techniques as well, and excessive heat fixation, and also the failure to uh, take the uh, trouble of examining the whole slide, you may still, uh, which may still have some uh, positive uh, areas. So interpretation of uh, culture results, probably culture is a gold standard for the diagnosis of uh, microbial keratitis. And the routine used uh, culture media, blood agar, chocolate agar, and saborodes dextrose agar, and anaerobic media if anaerobes are suspected. So the selective media is uh, are inoculated by streaking the spatula very lightly over the surface. That's very important because if you go deep seated, then these aerobic organisms may not grow. So you have to do a very light streak and the usual uh, C-shaped mark is a common configuration which is used. So because this helps to differentiate uh, between a contaminant and an actual growth. And fresh samples have to be taken. So every time that you, uh, you're inoculating, you have to take a new blade and uh, use a new um, uh, area to uh, scrape and streak. So criteria for positive culture are clinical signs of keratitis uh, with uh, one of the following, growth of an organism in one or two media. Confluent growth of the same pathogen in just one solid medium, a growth of uh, organism in a liquid as well as in a solid media. The Jones criteria for positive culture indicates that clinical infection in the presence of an isolation of bacteria, which have more than 10 or more colonies in one solid medium, an additional medium, and an isolation of fungi on any two media, and one medium in the presence of a positive sphere. Liquid media are highly sensitive, but less specific in demonstrating the organism as it's very difficult to, difficult to quantify the growth in the broth. So negative cultures can be had in patients with sterile non-infectious ulcers, uh, partial antibiotic therapy, inadequate sampling methods, an imp improper selection of media and incubation conditions, and again, a false interpretation of data. So in negative cultures, and if you want to rescript the patients not responding to empirical antibiotic, antibiotics have to be stopped at least 24 hours before rescraping is done. A PCR has an advantage of a greater speed than culture method. That is in about four hours, we get the results, but the disadvantage includes a cost and the high rate of false positivity. So anaerobic bacteria can be suspected in patients who have a pleomorphic slender or fusiform pathology on gram stain. When its growth is seen in the anaerobic uh, 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 zone of the liquid medium within the depth of the solid agar, presence of gas on the liquid media and failure to grow an organism in aerobic media despite organism detection in gram stain. So these are the some of the special stains such as GMSA, which is used for chlamydial infections. Uh, acid fast stain is used for atypical mycobacteria. Cacofluor white is used for nocardia as well as for fungus. Acidin orange is used for acanthamoeba and fungus as well as in bacteria. And a, a GMS stain is used for fungus as well as uh, the lactophenol cotton blue stains. So the role of corneal scraping uh, in addition to diagnostics also to uh, support medical therapy to, to aid penetration. And particularly in fungal infection, when there is a growth of uh, um, uh, growth of epithelium, it's important to do scraping at least once in two days to allow penetration of the drug. And also it's important to remove the slough from the base of the ulcer to allow uh, penetration of the drug. And now with the role of uh, PAC-CXL in patients with a, a recalcitrant infection, this has a role in, uh, um, the scraping has a role in first removing the uh, slough from the base of the ulcer and to reduce the organism load and also follow it up with the pac cxl if required. In patients who have advanced uh, ulcers with uh, impending uh, perforation or desmetose, a scraping of the a slough of the ulcer as well as the um, uh, creating a dry area around the ulcer is important before we uh, subject the patient to a cyanoacrylate glow. Air is injected into the anterior chamber if there is a complete perforation and cyanoacrylate glue is applied. If you apply the glue on top of a, a necrotic stuff, then it can fall off. So it's important to create a nice base for the glue to sit in so that uh, it produces a tectonic integrity that is required uh, uh, in patients with very thin corneas. So this is one of the patients who had a pseudomonas corneal ulcer and uh, was, uh, had a desmetoseal and underwent a glue. So this is one of the studies I would like to quote, which is uh, published from L.V. Prasad I Institute in Cornea, where they evaluated the corneal scraping uh, of both uh, bacterial and fungal keratitis. Uh, 
In bacterial keratitis, they took corneal scrapings from 251 patients in early keratitis and 841 from advanced keratitis. And in fungal corneal ulcers, they did KOH and the cocoa fluor white stain in 114 patients with early keratitis and 363 with advanced keratitis. And they found the sensitivity of gram stain in the detection of bacteria was only 36% in early and 40% in advanced keratitis. However, the specificity was higher of 84 and 87% respectively. Comparatively, the sensitivity and specificity of fungal detection was much higher in KOH as well as uh, cocoa fluor white stains, 61 and 89 percent respectively, as well as in advanced keratitis. So the predictive values were higher for fungal detection than for gram stain, uh, uh, or that is for bacterial detection. So this is a chart showing how the specificity and sensitivity is much higher in fungal uh, uh, detection than in uh, bacterial detection. So these are some of the cases uh, that we've come across. This is a patient with a contact lens and, uh, induced keratitis in 30 year old showing a gram negative uh, bacilli with a pseudomonas growth on blood agar and showing an excellent response to the, uh, uh, the antimicrobial uh, which is used for this patient. And this patient uh, is a patient who had a DSEC and developed a chronic endophthalmitis. And vitreous biopsy uh, show, uh, uh, on uh, Sabra Zaga showed candida albicans, which is stained here on gram stain. So the patient underwent a vitrectomy followed by a replacement of the graft and a, a penetrating keratoplasty has been done. And the patient has uh, responded well to treatment and is uh, uh, free of infection for the past six months. So this is a patient who had uh, um, steroids for a small uh, irritation in the eye and developed, came with a fungal uh, corneal ulcer and uh, which was proven by the LPCB strain as well as fusarium, which is grown on the subrods dextrose agra. And after antifungal treatment, the patient has uh, healed very nicely. So this is again a patient who had an issue of injury with a cow's tail. Uh, you can see the septate in the KOH strain and uh, the, fuse the aspergillus fumigators on the subrods agar. This is a gram-positive infection of a patient who had an SICS and the suture, the retained suture, which developed a gram-positive abscess and scraping found the gram-positive cocci and uh, responded to moxifloxacin. So caveats in microbiological intervention are small ulcers can be treated with prospectum antibiotic. Large bacterial ulcers with negative stain are, uh, started on empirical antibiotics as gram stain as low specificity and sensitivity until the culture yields a positive result. In case of fungal ulcers, it is uh, uh, it's important that until unless it is proven to be fungal, we should not uh, start them on any uh, uh, antifungals. So they can be started on empirical antibiotic and then wait for the culture results to uh, come up. But you cannot start patients with uh, clinical um, uh, evidence of fungal ulcer, which is not showing up a KOH positive because the study very clearly states that the both specificity and sensitivity of uh, um, uh, KOH and coccofluor white stain is of significant value in uh, fungal detection. So direct smear examination is of more value for immediate onset of treatment, particularly in uh, fungal infections. If there is a suspicion, then leak scraping can be done, uh, uh, particularly in atypical microbacteria or parasitic infections. In patients with re recalcitrant ulcers, with a strong suspicion of rare organisms such as pythium, it's important that we plan for early keratoplasty, early therapeutic keratoplasty, and this keratoplasty specimen can be sent for microbiological workup as well as for uh, histopathology workup. So in non-responsive ulcers, as well as in uh, ulcers which are going towards the limbus, early corneal uh, transplantation or uh, corneal transplantation should be uh, done uh, as early as possible. So once again, I'd like to repeat the side that corneal scraping is perhaps the most valuable specimen in case of corneal ulcer. An examination is a mainstay in the diagnosis and subsequent management. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohan, uh, uh, for a good overview of uh, corneal scraping. We now move on to the next talk, which will be given by Professor Namrata Sharma, and she will.